Hi boys and girls, today we are going to be continuing on with our learning about division. So what are we learning today? Well, we're continuing to use our knowledge of how a times table is built up to solve division problems. And today we're going to be focusing on using groups as a strategy. How are we going to learn this? Well, we've got this PowerPoint. You'll be doing a textbook page. You can have a go at hit the button. And as an active task, you can have a go at sharing counters, sweets, chocolates, anything equally. So if you have a bundle of sweets, then you could say, I'm going to share these equally between me and my mum. Okay, or imagine that someone else is there, or maybe your dog is there. You're going to share things equally between three people. Okay, so have a go at sharing different amounts equally. Why are we learning this? Well, we want to be successful learners who can solve division problems um, on textbook pages and worksheets and in real life as well. And we want to be confident individuals who can choose from a range of strategies. So we've looked at number lines, we've looked at arrays, and today we're going to focus on groups. So how will we know if we've been successful? We'll be able to explain the connection between multiplication and division. And we'll know that it's the inverse of each other. We'll be able to make division facts from times table facts. When we're solving a problem, we'll know which times table fact to use. We can use lots of different words to talk about what we are doing, so sharing and grouping, and we can record this in a different, a bundle of different ways, sorry, so including the multiplication and division symbols. And like I said, today we're really going to be focusing on using groups. But let's recap what we already know. So we've already looked at sharing equally. So here's a question where it asks us, how many cookies do Bobby and Serena get? So we have got three, six, eight cookies and two people. Okay, so we did this at the beginning of the week. How will we know how many cookies they'll each get? We need to share them equally. So we'll put one cookie of each person one at a time. So let's do that now. Okay, so we're not giving them all to Bobby and then leaving one left over for Serena. There needs to be equal amounts of cookies between the two people. So sharing them out one at a time, and this is the kind of thing, boys and girls, you could be doing as your active task. And how many did they each get? They've each got four. So we know that eight cookies divided by two people equals four. Okay, here's another question. We've got a pizza this time, and it's asking us, can we share this pizza equally between the two plates? Okay, so I know a lot of people um, will be getting pizzas at the weekend, maybe. I need to share them between you and your brother or sister. Um, one person can't really get more than the other. We need to share them equally. So we've got six slices. Let's see how we would do that. Again, giving each person one at a time. And then we can see that each person's got three slices of pizza. So six divided by two is... So boys and girls, we'll already be quite confident with sharing things equally. And today we're really going to focus on grouping for division. Now, in this example, it's asking us to group the footballs into groups of threes to find out how many nets are needed, because one football net can hold three balls. So we need to really identify the groups of three amongst this. So here is one group of three. Here is another group of three. And this is how you can be working out problems, boys and girls, in your textbook pages and your worksheets, it's a really good strategy, there's another group of three. So we have got one, two, three groups of three. Now, we know that in a division, the biggest number always comes first. So how do we write this? Well, we're going to write nine, because there was nine to start with, and we've divided it into groups of three. And we know that in each group of three, there are three balls, okay? So in the three groups, sorry, so nine divided by three equals three. Let's try another example. This example is telling us that each basket can hold four apples and there are 16 apples on the tree and we want to know how many baskets can be filled. Okay, so it's really 16 divided by four. So let's see how many groups of four we can find. So here is one group of four. Here is another group of four. There's another group of four. 
and a group of four. So how many groups of four do I have? I've got one, two, three, four groups of four. So what is the biggest number that we have used here? Well, it's 16. We started off with 16 apples and we've divided them into groups of four. And we have found that there are four groups of four. So we now know that 16 divided by four is four. And then we know that there will be four baskets that could be filled up using apples from the tree. Right, looking now at our next example, and there's some pencils here, and it's asking us, how many packs of pencils would these pencils fill? And we know that pencils are sold in packs of five. So what are we going to group these pencils into? We're going to group them into bundles of five, into groups of five. So let's see if I can find some groups of five. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's one group of five. There's another group of five. And here is another group of five. So I have got one, two, three groups of five. So I started out with 15 pencils. I split it into groups of five. So I'm dividing by five. And how many of these groups do I have? Well, I've got three groups of five. Okay, so 15 divided by five equals three. I hope this is making sense to you boys and girls. Right, the next question we've got, and I want you to have a go at this one on a whiteboard if you're in school or in your jotter if you are at home or on a piece of paper. And it's telling us that the bakery sells gingerbread people in packs of two. And it's asking us, how many packs can be made from these gingerbread people? Now, the first thing you're going to do, boys and girls, is find out how many gingerbread men there are all together. Okay? So you need to find out how many there are all together and then split them into packs of two. So you might want to pause the video while you do this. You can draw out the problem and then press play to see if you've managed to work it out correctly. Okay, so let me count how many there are. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Right. There's 16 gingerbread men all together. So that's going to be my first number because I'm starting off with the biggest number, how many there are in total. And I'm going to split them into groups of two because they're sold in packs of two. So here's one pack of two, two packs of two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So I have got 16, I divided it into groups of two, and how many groups are there? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that 16 divided by two is eight. This is easy, boys and girls. I hope you're doing okay with this. Let's try the next one. So we've got mince pies this time. I'm not really a fan of mince pies, boys and girls, but you might like them. So we're going to see oh, how many boxes could be filled using this mince pies. And we know that the mince pies are sold in boxes of six. So again, you can pause the video and see if you can work this out. Don't forget to count all of the mince pies first, and that's going to be your first number, and then to circle groups of six. Okay, then press play when you're ready. So there are three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 mince pies. I'm going to put them into groups of six. So here's one group of six, two groups of six, three groups of six. So I've divided by, by six, okay, groups of six, and there are three groups of six. Well done if you got that, boys and girls. Right, I'm going to have a couple more examples, okay, and again, I want you to try this one on your own. This time it's telling us that peppers are sold in packs of two. So how many packs can be filled using these peppers? So remember, your first step is going to be counting all the peppers that are there. You then want to draw them out and then circle the packs of two. Okay, so circle groups of two. So pause the video while you have a go and play it when you're ready. So let's see how many there are together. I've got three, four, five, six, seven, 14. Uh, let me check actually, I don't think it's going up in sevens. 
12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So there are 22 papers and I'm going to start from groups of two. So here's one group of two, two, three, four. You can see that sometimes it can take a while with the bigger numbers to circle the groups. So it's not always the best strategy, but it's a good strategy to learn. And it's just about picking the strategy really that works best for you. And here we go. So I've circled a group of two. Let's check now how many groups are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right. So 22. I divide that into groups of two, and there are 11 groups. I hope you got it right, boys and girls. If not, you can go back to the beginning and have another watch. We've got one more example. We've got bananas this time, and it's telling us that bananas are sold in packs of five. How many packs can be filled using these bananas? So I like to pause the video, okay, try and work it out. I'm not going to give you any more clues this time and play to see if you've got it correct. So let's count how many bananas are there all together. 5, 10, 15, 20. And dividing it into groups of five. So let's circle the groups of five. So one, two, three, four. So 20 divided by five equals Four, because I've got four groups of five. Right, boys and girls, that is the PowerPoint finish for today. I hope that all makes sense. Just let me know if you've got any questions in the Ask the Teacher channel. Bye for now.